Sorry for the delay. I know I haven't produced anything for quite a while, as in about three or four weeks, either video-wise or anything in the workshop. We all know what one of these are. It's an end mill. And one of the things I've been meaning to do for a long time is find a decent method of sharpening one instead of just doing it by eye. It's been quite effective, but it's not really the best. Especially if you're using something as small as this. Or if you go and sharpen something as large as this. They're not massively expensive. But when you are trying to equip your workshop on a shoestring. Saving 15-20 pounds here and there. Uh, makes a lot of difference. And it means that you can equip with other stuff if you can sharpen these. Kevin, Mr Factotum. Kindly sent me a set of drawings. And this is what he has. It's also what I now have. So this short video is going to be about the manufacturing of this, which is a guide. That when it's clamped down to your grinder, you have a block which will accept, in this case, Gonna get stuck now. You can see this. Ah, there you go. It will accept this end mill, or you can put sleeves in for smaller ones. And the idea being, stay good end mill is that you push this up against the stop, which will give you a positive stop position. Turn it, turn it, and that's the general idea. How this worked have always eluded me, but like I said, Kevin was very kindly sent me a set of drawings to give me the idea how it works. So working off Kevin's drawings and also the modification that Kevin made, I started off with a simple block of 25 by 25 by 50 mil long or inch by inch by two inch long piece of EN3A. Uh, I used that material because that's what I had. Originally on the drawings it shows holes in the top Stay. Hmm. Obviously everything is not behaving itself today. Kevin modified this to put a slot in. I've done what Kevin did. And everything sort of like revolved around the little escape artist here. Now that is a spring from something. Don't know what. Uh, but it's ten and a half millimeter, so I knew that the hole I had to drill at this end had to be ten and a half millimetres and that would give me the dimensions for everything thereafter. So I drilled it 10.5 and it turned out 11.3 but it meant the spring could fit in. That's also through drilled and that's six millimetres which would allow me just a bolt for the time being to fit the six millimetre bolt in that end. This is where it deviates from the original drawings where they had a, a captive sleeve that that bolt would have held in place and then there would have been another screw thread and whatever else which got really complicated and I didn't fancy doing it. So after I drilled that hole at 11.3 I made a plunger shaft at 11.3 Top end at 25 to match the same size as the block and tap the end M6. So that was that. Now the problem is obviously with these things if you just drop them into a hole, put a spring behind it and tighten it up, it's going to rotate. So as per the original drawing, you rivet a pin on and you can just about see when I actually knocked it over there. And the method was quite simple and quite um, accurate to do. You basically get this, if you can imagine the pin's not there, and there's no hole there either. You drop that in, put the bolt in the bottom, lock it in place, and then you drill a 2.5mm hole through the plunger down into the block. Then you take the plunger back out, and it is rather tight, and I'm rather better fingered, and then you open that hole out when it's still in position, so you've got a clearance hole. And then literally you put the pin in 
which you've reduced down to the size of the 2.5, drop it into place if it bottoms out, hammer the top over, and then shorten the pin after. That is your anti-rotation. So if we take our spring, the little coiled escape artist, you drop that in there, and you then end up with a spring-loaded plunger, which can't rotate. Kevin has made a modification on his as well, um, where he's got, instead of, I believe it was an Allen bolt, he's now made a knurled nut to fit on there. And as you can see, well, I should be able to tighten this by hand without the need of a spanner. If I hold that there, you can see as I tighten, this pulls it down. So that is your locking position and of course then when it's mounted to the grinder uh, every time you do a cut you can give a quarter turn, half turn and advance the plunger out slightly so you're incrementally increasing the cut on each one of the faces as you rotate, rotate it through our little block which I said will slide up against the stop. And that is basically it. It was the anti-rotation part I couldn't figure out. I was thinking slots and all sorts of manner of things. And it's like, mm, could be difficult or keyways. But it worked out really simple. And I believe this originated from a Harold Lloyd book. No, not Harold Lloyd. He was a film star. Harold Hall. That's the one. Not the guy with the boater and the glasses. It's the guy with the lathe and the milling machine we're talking about. On the original drawings and the way that Kevin's also uh, constructed is, there's an angle plate which comes out there with a series of holes and slots, which allows you to mount the stop block in the correct position in relation to the wheel. Because of the diameter of the wheel, it's set up on these holes so that you get the correct angle for the cut for the actual uh, end mill as in the pitch that way and by changing the hole positions on the side they tip it more which will give you the clearance at the back as well i don't particularly want to use this machine or a conventional um, grinding disc to do this process what i want to try and do is do it with a diamond stone so you end up with a a more finished um, cutting surface and probably removing less material as well. So in my haste to be different, or as the wife says, bloody awkward, uh, I've decided to go and try and use this. And that is a 75 millimeter diamond cup stone. If you've seen the previous video, you see you can get really, really good results uh, sharpening lathe tools. It's not for grinding. Or for forming tools is purely for sharpening but in my haste like i said to be different um, i would cause myself another problem if we hypothetically say that that's fixed down in the right position and all the rest of it and i advance that forward because of the size of the disc i'm getting very very close to the top and bottom cutting faces the disc or the, the cup basically isn't large enough to give me the clearance i need so i thought aha canning plan We'll go that way, which will give me more clearance. But we're revolving or we're rotating this in the wrong direction. I don't know if it would make a massive difference to the cutting edge finish. But conventionally, that should be turning that way. Now, if I was really clever, I'd find a way of reversing the motor. But I'm not that clever. So what I've had to do is order a flat 125 mil diamond wheel so it's just basically a flat wheel probably 10 millimeters thick and this cutting surface around the perimeter so then i will be able to go that way with it but of course then it means i've got to build a new table which will have to be adjustable um, in angle and everything else so i've just made myself more work and for the very very observant of you Again, I believe in showing mistakes. My little plunger 
since the beginning of the video has now developed a flat spot because as I said and I quite honestly admit to it quite often I cocked up for doing it on that way I made it that big they wouldn't fit together and I ended up with a gap there so if you're making one wherever the bigger size hole is check how much material you've got left there and don't let your overhang be any larger than it otherwise your largest end mill won't fit I hope you like this please go to see Kevin's videos he's done two videos on this particular subject and he shows the making and he shows the modifications he has done which I have incorporated and a big thank you to Kevin uh, for giving me the information to make this next part will be about the table hopefully it'll be completely finished I'll try my best to get down the shed and get this completed within the next week or so we'll have to wait and see see how my little pins will carry me down the path or not look after yourself everyone thank you very much to all the new subscribers and the likes as always they are very very appreciated and it just keeps me going see you all soon